Surely making your own robot arm can be that hard. Well, today we're going to be taking a look at the C++ code that makes this thing possible. Uh -huh. Welcome back everyone. Thank you so much for all the lovely responses and comments on the first video. We got a lot of really great feedback and a lot of really great suggestions, some of which we're going to try out today and the next ones. I've already ordered a bunch of Amazon stuff so we can try it out in the future episodes. Without further ado, let's continue building our wonderful robot arm, which is twitching right now. In the first episode, we went over the basics of Arduino and how to use the main components, how to use the breadboard and how to connect these wires and these servo motors to it. Today it looks a little bit different than it did last time. So I'm going to walk you through the additions that I've made and the new cool functions that we've implemented. I'm also still using household appliances. I have these little pieces of plastic that we're trying out as arms today that we are still taping together with, well, tape. And they still work well enough that I'm happy to continue iterating on it just to kind of show that you don't need a lot of fancy gear just to learn and to try out these projects. So with that out of the way, what did we do differently today? This is the state of our board right now. As you can see, we still have the potentiometers there that we also had last time, but we've added two lovely little buttons uh, and everything else has more or less stayed the same. Now, the reason that I added the buttons is because I wanted to program in some standard positions. So while the potentiometers allow us to control each arm, we are really squeezing this board to the max. So I really think in the next episode, we're going to need to attach a second board just to be able to expand this. And as many of you suggested, I am getting a battery. Okay, this is the last project we're going to run just using the board to power it. And it's because I only have two very tiny servo motors. I was afraid to even add the third one. We're going to add a battery next episode and discuss a bit more of how to do the math for the electro current setup so that we don't burn our board and we have enough power for the torque. I also want to be able to later on command the arm to do something. So in next episode, we're going to explore the OpenCV software to detect images. And I wanted to be able to command the robot arm with my own arm. So if I do this, I want it to stand up. If I do this, I want it to lay down pretty much the same commands that I taught my dog. So anticipating that need, we need to set up the foundation and the functions within the Arduino environment that will allow us to respond to those image detections. And that is what these buttons are for. We're going to create two different functions that will put my robot arm in that position. Namely, standing up will be a straight line and going down will be compressing itself to go back on the table. So how do we do that? We're going to have to do our very first bit of refactoring because the current code is not compatible with programming those positions. Perhaps you could already guess why, but let's take a look at the board and explain it in detail. All right, so what we've changed is in the previous scenario, the potentiometer each controls one of the dials. And this works by taking the input of the potentiometer, mapping it from the potentiometer's range to the servo motor's range, and then just writing that angle. So if the potentiometer is a zero, the servo motor will also be at zero. If the potentiometer is at 1023, the servo motor will be at 179. So each of the max ranges. However, if you want to save some particular positions, if I have, for example, both at zero for a relaxed position and both at max for a max position, I can activate those with the buttons. However, as you can probably already tell, this will be a contradiction between which input will the servo motor listen to. So if I press the zero zero button, they try to go to zero zero, but they also want to listen to the potentiometer values. And when I release it, they go back to listening to the potentiometer and same for the maximum. You can see their internal conflict really shaking them up. So instead, what we want to do is detect the amount of movement in the potentiometer. So if we go from zero, zero, I want that position to stay with the servo motors. And then when I start moving the potentiometers again, I want the amount of movement to translate to how much they change and the same for the other position. So we can switch between using the buttons and using the potentiometer and both of them should work in harmony so that we don't give them identity crises. So we have to do some changes in our code. Right, so we're going to take a look at our C++ code and I wanna implement the two different functions that assign the buttons different positions. We can try those out first independently from the potentiometer 
and then we need to change the way that the potentiometers collect the input and write to the servo motors so that we could switch between the buttons and the servo motors without giving them a psychotic attack. So what it comes down to is we need to know the previous value of the potentiometer so that we can calculate how much am I twisting it in which direction and add that to our angle. So rather than taking the exact position, so say this would be 50 and this would be 100, if I go from 50 to 100, I'm not going to write the position 50 and the position 100 anymore. I'm going to write current position and second position plus 50. This allows us to change the neutral position of our robot based on whatever buttons might have been picked and then only use the potentiometer to adjust the position rather than completely overwrite a new one. So what I'm doing in the function is I'm taking in the old and the new value. I'm mapping them to the correct range. So the potentiometer goes from zero to 1023 and the servo motor only goes to 179. So we're matching that with a default formula. We're adding that sum together and making this the new angle that we wanna to apply to the servo motor. And finally, we have a bit of extra logic because technically you could keep rotating the potentiometer even after the rotor is at the max in either direction. So I wanna make sure I cover those cases and only return the max and the minimum. And of course, since the return completely exits the function, there's no need to use else here. We're not gonna to get to the second or the third condition if the first one already returned us out of the function. So what we do now when the potentiometer moves is we're detecting the new value. We're doing this function and updating the status of the servo motor. And then we are once again storing the previous value as we go on and on and on. This previous value is going to keep up with us just one step behind. See, this one moves both. So this will be the table wrist. And then the second one would be the elbow. And we're gonna try the buttons. And there we have the final result. It kind of works. I'm going to be honest, it's still incredibly finicky and twitchy and not very consistent, which might have to do with the actual components or maybe my code. We're going to keep iterating on it and it can only get better from here. All right. And with that, we've gone over functions in C++ and how to include them into the Arduino code, how to refactor and make sure you're debugging and testing all the components independently and how to advance on our robot arm. In the next episode, we're going to upgrade our motors to the heavier duty ones so that they stop behaving so ir irrationally. We're going to upgrade perhaps some of our tools as well in the plastic department. And we're going to expand our breadboard with even more circuits and make the solution more complicated. As always, check out the GitHub for all the code that we've been running today. You can copy it into your Arduino IDE and run it yourself. And I am adding pictures of all the board components as well, so you can replicate it. I'll work on making some diagrams also, especially when we start learning about electricity and the components of it next episode. Hope you had fun, hope you learned something, and I'll see you again next week. Bye.